Welcome back to another episode of the Hustle Nation podcast. Today, as always, we've got a real treat. Mr. Spencer Jones is in the house. Fellow Wisconsinite, too. Spencer is an <laughs> energy sovereignty master, positive mindset expert, keynote speaker, and corporate culture designer. Spencer, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me on. I'm excited to be here and just shine my light with all of you beautiful people. Love it. I said that and I, I could hear myself talking and I was I sounded very intrigued because I am. I really want to know <laughs> what an ever, energy sovereignty master is. Uh, that's a great question. Um, so basically, an energy sovereignty master is a person who can manage their uh, the energy coming into their life and out of their life. So I like to look at it this way, right? We have this beautiful light inside of us and you can imagine it almost as if it was a cup, right? Well, you have things pouring into your cup, right? That could be the books you're reading, the podcast you're listening to like this, the people around you. Uh, it's pouring good energy or bad energy into you. And sometimes we're conscious of those things, the good and bad. Other times there's, we're not. And your energy is also going somewhere, right? You're pouring your cup into other people or things, or people are poking holes and stealing your energy, those energy vampires. So really being the master of your energy sovereignty is to be the master of your energy of that cup. So you are intentionally pouring things in that are serving you and helping you be at your best and then pouring into others intentionally and uh, eliminating or vanquishing those energy vampires from your life. Well, for anyone listening, hopefully that is a good way to keep you into this episode uh, and listen to the end. But let, let's go back a step because I want to ask you, how did you get into this. Now, this isn't just something that your guidance counselor in high school says, hey, Spencer, I think you'd be a great energy sovereignty master, by the way. <laughs> so tell us about your journey and how you got to where you are now. You mean that wasn't one of the choices when I sat down with them? I mean, man, really. <laughs> Entrepreneur wasn't either highly recommended, but you know, here we are. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. Um, well, and for me, I was homeschooled, believe it or not. So I was homeschooled from third grade up through high school, uh, then went to college for music education and graduated uh, after seven years going to college, you know, bounced around to three different colleges and uh, had that whole interesting experience. And then I taught middle school and high school choir for nine years at a couple different schools. And so for me, I, you know, I'm an entrepreneur now full time, and I never would have said it at the time when I was teaching, but looking back, I always have been an entrepreneur, right? I've started little businesses, right? I, I, I grew pumpkins. I grew up, up in the country here in Wisconsin. So what more Wisconsin thing outside of selling milk? Okay, I sold pumpkins, right? Or I, <laughs> I had a business shoveling snow and lawn mowing. Uh, and it just, all these little things. I started a piano studio when I was in college. Uh, so in any case, I started teaching. It was my passion. I loved helping kids be able to express themselves, dig into the music and really create this safe, warm, loving culture within the within the choir room, right? So no matter the crap that the students were facing at home or in other classes, they had a safe place to come. And it was really incredible. We grew choir programs, you know, two or three, even four times their original size uh, from when I got there. But I felt called and pulled to do something else. And so I was experimenting, what what would that be? You know, kayak fishing, it's one of my passions and hobbies. So then I started to try making that into a business and almost burnt out uh, just from pushing so hard, hustling too much so that uh, I almost ended up quitting the whole sport and giving it up completely. Uh, I stopped before that happened, uh, thankfully, so I could still go out and enjoy it. But long story short, what got me to being the energy sovereignty master is I was uh, gaining weight. I couldn't chase my passion as well as as easily as I wanted to of kayak fishing. So I said, all right, I need to start losing weight. Great. So I started working out after finally convincing myself after yo-yoing up and down for years, right, as we all do. Uh, so I started finally committed, went for it, started losing weight. Some friends took notice, people who were in um, a MLM company with it and said, hey, you're really good at this. Would you like to help others do this? I'm like, sure, why not, right? Like, I don't know. Let's Let's learn about it. And that company was saying, hey, to do personal growth, personal development, it'd be, it, it's good for you, right? Obviously, now I know it helps with sales and confidence and all those other things. But at that time, I'm like, no, I'm not going to touch this stuff. Like, I hated professional development after seven years in college. I'm like, I'm, I'm good. I, I don't need any more of this. I'm not going to waste my time. So they were nice. They were gentle and calm. But they just, you know, kept asking, inviting me to take part. So I finally did. Uh, and I listened to Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy on my commute to work, right? Good Using book. my time as wisely as I could. And 
even with that first half hour drive, I took action on the first nugget things that they shared in that book. And even that day, I was like, holy crap, this is amazing. Right? I started to see the differences and changes within my life just that first day of how I handled my students, of how I was getting stuff done. It wasn't a, a, you know, a, a light switch moment, but it was enough where I was like, oh, I'm noticing this change. So I kept going, kept taking action and seeing the, the massive and positive changes in my life and then got hooked and started to listen to, because I didn't like reading at the time, listen to more and more personal growth development uh, and me being the person that I am, I'm like, well, let's implement it. Let's take the stuff that resonates and implement it. I learned about positivity. I've always been an optimist. What do you mean? I, I can wake up and feel happy? Like, I don't I don't have to, like, I woke up on the wrong side of bed or someone cuts me off in traffic. I don't have to be pissed off and angry all day. Like, that was my life, right? That's a roller coaster, yo-yo of emotions. And I realized, oh, I can, I can master this. I can allow myself to still be, it's always a roller coaster. It's life's a journey. But instead of the drastic highs and lows, it's more of a, a gentle ride with it. And I could savor more of it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And so then I really dug into positive mindset, how you can uh, really build positive neural pathways within your brain. And then the whole energy component of that, of mastering energy sovereignty. Oh, we're all that have this beautiful energy inside of us. Everything's energy. How does that resonate and vibrate with the things outside, vibrate with the stuff coming in and really learning to master that. So I just went down that rabbit hole, fell in love and have been helping people ever since, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or big groups and the stuff that we do and now to the, the global company that we have. So, that so long story. In a no, that's really it's super <laughs> helpful. One of the things I want to hit on that you, you said, you talked about kind of changing the kind of the neural pathways to shift really to this positive mindset. I, I actually had a, uh, Chris, you can appreciate this. I was um, with my son this weekend and he was actually, uh, we were in the golf sim and he was playing golf and he was off by himself. He was doing it himself. And he can't, when he, once he was done, I'm like, well, what happened? He's like, I got in my head. I got, like, I just got in my head and it, he got into that negative mindset. Right. And so then it just, it, it, it spiraled. And he, so he just didn't, he didn't play his best. And it was one of those things as he and I were talking about it, like, how do you, how do you, uh, coach people to just identify when they're in, you know, when they're in that negative mindset, because like in, in his case, like he said it and he knew it, but when I asked him like, well, what, like what triggered it? He's like, ah, that's a good question. Like, I'm not sure, I'm not even really sure where it started. And I don't know exactly when I noticed it. I just know now <laughs> that, right. that that's where I was. Um, and obviously that's, that's in a very small time frame, but for, I know for, you know, even for myself, sometimes it's been years where you don't even really quite realize it. Uh, so I just, how do you, how do you get people to kind of almost get out of their own head to just identify they're in that state so they can do something about it? Well, first, uh, first and foremost, I want to say congratulations to you and your son and to everyone who realizes, oh crap, I was in my head at that moment. Right. Because so many of us just go by, as you said, some of us go for years and not even realizing it. So just to have that awareness that's huge because then once you have the awareness, that's the first step. You, everything else is possible after that, right? You could stay the same. You could change it, whatever you want. But the awareness is the first step. So I applaud you and your son for, for having that awareness. So then, okay, let, you're, you're aware. Like, oh my gosh, I'm getting in my head. When I, when I played golf, man, I would get in my head a lot, right? And then all of a sudden, my shots would be even worse than they already were, which is hard to do, but it happened. <laughs> um, so in any case, uh, I just started getting my head. And so what I've learned and what I now teach people to do is to come to the present moment, right? This a mindfulness has become the really big buzzword the last couple of years. And I'm really happy it has, but some of it's um, getting to be too generalized. So let's, mm -hmm. let's talk mindfulness real quick. Well, it's coming to the present moment right here and now. What ways can you do that, right? There's lots of ways. For me, some of the more positive ways is to just honestly stop and breathe. Just I stop. Yeah pause everything that I'm doing and I breathe and I'm not thinking about the thing that I'm spiraling on about, right? Or getting my head about the golf game or this person said that to me. I literally focus on my breath, the inhale and exhale. So some things uh, that can help people is uh, the box breathing. So you breathe in for four counts, hold for four counts, exhale for four, hold for four and repeat that or different kind of breath holding things, or you're just focusing on your breath. All that really does, uh, the counting's nice and it helps you calm your, your mind down, is it forces you to think about your breath as opposed to thinking about mm -hmm. the other thing. Because it's hard to think about the other thing as I'm trying to count to four. I was a choir director. Yeah. 
I can count to four. <laughs> Above that, it gets it gets dicey. But four, I can count up to. But I still have to focus on it. So now, okay, I'm coming here. I'm thinking about that, and that then allows us to calm our bodies, calm our minds. Our breath is such an incredible tool because it's something that happens naturally, but yet we can control it. And so when we can control it and learn to calm it down, it uh, lowers your heart rate, opens the blood vessels up, calms your mind down, brings that focus on. So then you could uh, look at whatever's going on in a more objective light. So then for your son, okay, cool. He realizes it after the fact. So maybe during the time if he realized it, he could have paused and breathed, right? That That's one of the options he could do. Uh, I've, there's other people who enjoy the pain more, so right? they wear that, that rubber band on the wrist and snap that, right? Because it brings them to the moment. I'm like, that works. Yeah, but if you want to do that, go for it. Uh, you know, so you could do that. You could find gratitude. Just stop and intentionally said, okay, instead of going negative, what am I grateful for in this moment? What are the good things right here now? And it might feel like, uh, like you're lying to yourself or that you're finding the most minute things. You're like, this doesn't really matter. But it does because now you're forcing your brain instead of going on the negative neural pathway that it's taking. You're forcing it to take that positive neural pathway and rebuild and strengthen uh, that, uh, that neural connection that you're forming. So looking at that is great. So for me personally, I do gr either breath work and then gratitudes or just straight into gratitudes. And I combine those two. And then usually once I'm in a place where I'm calmer, have a little bit more positivity from those gratitudes in my, in my heart and in my mind, then I can look objectively at it. Okay. What was happening? You know, um, uh, I'm just thinking for your son's like, okay, um, I didn't follow through, or I, I looked up earlier in my swing as opposed to looking down at the ball or whatever it is. Okay, well, then you could look objectively, like more objectively at it and see what was going on. I like to think about it like, like you're a scientist, right? Okay, well, here's, here's your experiment, your thing going on. Oh, no, let's dissect it. Let's peel off the layers and look. But if, as soon as I get emotionally evolved again, like I get frustrated, irritated, I'll take that step back, I'll breathe. And then, okay, now let's come back. And then I could start dissecting it again. Hmm. Um, and sometimes we see those things that are causing us to be frustrated. Sometimes we don't. Um, and sometimes it takes us years. Sometimes it's talking to another person, right? You had uh, Mike Faber on here uh, yeah. just recently. And so he is one of those people for me. Like I could tell him, hey, this was going on. I was feeling frustrated. I was in my head. I think it might've been this, but I'm not sure. And he's like, oh, have you thought about this or looked at it that way, right? It's a person from a different perspective who can point you in a direction. Just become aware because then you can make choices uh, with what, however you want to handle it. It's a long answer. Yeah, love it. I like it. So I'm curious. I love this stuff, but so often when people are first exposed to the idea of positive energy, positive mindset, positive thinking, any of this stuff, their first response is, well, that's bullshit. They're like, yeah, that doesn't work. Like, oh, I tried that, which I, warrants a whole nother conversation. <laughs> what do you say to those people? Because I used to think that way too, long, long, long time ago, until I realized that happiness is a choice. So is your mindset. So is a lot of the things in life. It, it's up to you. But how do you, where do you start with those people? Good, good question. As it's, it's something that's ingrained in us to look for the negatives, to focus on the bad things. And so many of us are just running on our systems, uh, the way that our thought presses, uh, the limiting beliefs that we have without even realizing it. So they go, well, yeah, I, I've met many people who are like, that's woo woo. That's a bunch of crap that just doesn't work. And what I love more uh, coming out recently is that a lot of it's been research. There's scientific backing on, oh, look, the, the energy side of it, especially there's research of going, hey, everything's a vibration. Everything from the the sound you're hearing, right? If we, we all know sounds, sound waves, right? So, okay, that, that's a vibration. So that's easy. But even my coffee mug, the coffee in it, the cells in your body are technical, are they, they vibrate. It's a vibration. So it's energy. To some, some are vibrating faster than others. So, okay, if we could embrace that everything's energy, well, we can change that to a degree currently, right? So if we think of a microwave, right? When you heat up something in the microwave, you're changing its vibrational state from being cold to hot. And you're not changing its matter. Well, that's a whole different story, whatever. But you're, you're changing the temperature of it, right? So I can't say, okay, I'm going to change this coffee mug into water. I'm not 
I, I'm not at that stage, right? Or can't do that. I imagine very few people are. I mean, there's this guy named Jesus who supposedly did that stuff, right? Cool. So we could go into that world of it. But what is it? So my thought is, and the way I, I approach people to actually answer your question is, okay, cool. Like this stuff's woo woo. I'm challenging you. I'll challenge you this. If you write down five things in your life that's going on right now, just write them down. And then afterwards, I'm not going to give you any direction. Just write down five things. What, how many of those things are good things? How many of those things are bad things? What's your focus on? Mm -hmm. So life has an algorithm just like social media does. And social media, the platforms, whatever one you want to pick, they want to keep you on that platform as long as possible. So they're seeing how you scroll what you do on that platform. Right. So they say, OK, well, you're looking at this negative content, this stuff that's drama, that's horror, that's negative, mean or whatever. It's holding your attention. Your, the platform goes, OK, cool. You like this because you scrolled over for a half a second more or spent 30 seconds reading it. We're going to show you more of it because we're trying to make sure we're serving you and keep you on here as long as possible. It's true. Okay. Well, life's the same way. And I know I'm like really boiling it down to simple, simple terms for you. I, I, I get. But life's similar. What we focus on is, is what we get more of. So if you're focused in life of on negatives of, oh my gosh, the drama with this person, this person cut me off and I'm just ranting about it all day, right? I've had people do that in my life and then I just got stuck on it or I had this really negative conversation with my in-laws yesterday and I'm just ranting and raving about it to everyone who will listen. Well, all, all I'm doing is I'm focused on the negative, focus on the negative, focus on the negative. And then life will show you like, okay, well, you're like this. We'll give you more of it. It's that attract attracts like. The vibration of the negatives is going to attract similar negatives. But if you focus on the positives, the higher vibration, well, then life's going to start giving you more, right? So I start with gratitudes and build it out from there. So of those five things you wrote down, how many of them were positive? How many were negative in your life? Then I would challenge you after you wrote those down to try to focus on gratitudes. Try to find three things you're grateful for every day for five days. Just, you know, take the 30 seconds for five days. That's what, two and a half minutes of your life to write down three things you're grateful for and try to mix them up. So it's not always the same thing, food, shelter, family, or water, whatever, right? Pick different ones each day. And I could guarantee it that if you commit to doing that by the fifth day, you will start to see more positives, more gratitudes in your life. It's not going to be a oh my God, all of a sudden, everything, sunshine, rainbows, and unicorns. But you're going to go, oh, I see more. And I'm starting to see it faster and easier and recognize more of that in my life that you will prove to yourself that, oh, this stuff does work just by focusing on, on some of those good things. And I'm not here to tell you that negativity doesn't exist, that everything, sunshine, rainbows, and unicorns, no, uh, crap happens. There's negatives, there's bad things in life. I, I don't want to have that toxic positivity, right? The nickname some people gave me is the Prince of Positivity. I love positivity, but I'm not about the toxic stuff where everything's, you know, you just sweep all the negatives under the rug or you shove it in a closet, don't look at it. It's out there. Let's look at it, let's address it. Let's look at it for the lessons that we can learn, right? So if we're thinking of hustling with business, okay, what are the lessons I've learned from businesses in the past or moves that we made within the business that didn't work? What can we learn? What can we take away from that? As opposed to focusing on the, oh, crap, this didn't work. And I lost this amount of money, this amount of clients or whatever. You know, I didn't land that deal that I was hoping to. But what can I learn? What can I take away from that? Let me feel and embrace that pain, that frustration. Okay, but well, then let's let it go. Take the lessons with us and then keep going because that's how we can continue to grow and, uh, and improve. I think that kind of answered your question in a couple different ways. I, oh, okay. yeah. Okay. <laughs> So Spencer, one of the other things uh, that was included in your bio was around the culture designer. Mm. Uh, can, can you share a little bit about that? Because you know, I actually am, am talking in two days on culture and the culture in our business and the impact that it has and how to how to change and impact culture. But I, you're curious when you talk about culture designer, which I love. I love that concept. Uh, you know, what does that mean to you, and how do you approach that? I'll answer that with a story. Um, so one of the jobs I had uh, teaching was, it was a good job. It was I, good coworkers. There's, you know, a couple negative Nellies in there and all that. But 
the the principles were good. The administration seemed to be helpful and moving us forward, right? Helping us be at our best, do the best things we can for the students. And then one one person left uh, to chase his passion doing something else, and we brought in another principal. Okay, great. And for the first year, they were fine. They were uh, getting their their feet wet and just letting things run and and figure out what they need to do. Well, then the second year, she started to implement different strategies, different ideas. Cool, All right? That's that's okay, right? And I, I hope that that good leaders would. However, it seemed to take a negative turn when uh, when the teachers weren't able to express their thoughts or opinions or be able to. Uh, in a, in a constructive way, right to each other or to them, people felt like there was a target on their back from her trying to get them fired, myself included, with that, uh, and just the toxic, like it's my way or the highway of not even willing to listen. And I get it, right. I mean, uh, if we think about my energy, like, hey, I want you on my energy bus and join me. If not, cool, that's fine. Go over there and and you do you. But it was done in a, in a way that wasn't bringing the family closer together, right? I talked about when I was a choir director, we try to have a community in our classroom. Well, mm-hmm. a job and your coworkers, well, that's a community. How can you allow your coworkers and team members to feel seen, heard, felt, uh, acknowledged for their work? Because if they are if they have a positive community, it's not saying that crap's not going to happen, right? That you're going to have to give policies or lay things down or share things that you don't want to. That's not going to be helpful. But if you can build a positive, constructive community and culture in there, well, they're going to be more receptive to it. They're going to work harder. They're going to be uh, more in tune with you and your and the business's vision. And then that's just going to trickle down to the people that you impact. So for me, the designing the company culture and bringing it in is like, okay, well, let's help you be at your best personally. You know, master your energy sovereignty, and then help your team be able to do that themselves. So that now they're their own individual masters and you can all work together and uh, and be at your best so that your individual at your best, the company or your team is, and that's just going to affect everybody else. Spencer, at that level, is it any harder teaching kids this stuff than it is adults? I would almost say it's easier. That's what I figured. Kids than adults. <laughs> uh mainly well two reasons and i guess it boils down to one and that is their age um the fact that as adults we we've been running on our systems and programming for that much longer than kids right so it's ingrained in us and instilled within us and we've reinforced it over and over and over and over and over again kids depending on the age uh have been running their systems for years but not as many and uh, at the age as i was teaching middle school high school uh, and and younger that they they're still learning right they still have generally that mindset okay I'm here to learn to grow to for people to pour into me Probably, that's not the words they would pick right but that's <laughs> but w- what they're doing and so okay we're they're learning these new tool strategies so they're open to trying new tools new ideas new concepts that that you can instruct them or guide them with and support them on their journey so that it's easier for them to start to see it and implement it. And then if they have that safe place, like the choir classroom, safe place where then they could come in and not feel judged, not feel worried about, even though like they're implementing all these things that they're learning or one piece at a time outside of it in there, that's their chance to recharge, right? They're like almost draining their battery outside uh, at first. So let's come here and get a place to recharge. And so with adults, it's trickier because you don't necessarily have that, that centering place uh i mean we we're, we work to build it you know, within our within our um ecosystem our energizer ecosystem uh, the community we have but it's still not quite the same as having that physical place hmm. love these questions these are awesome yeah it's really good chris go ahead yeah, so I, I'm really curious. You said gratitude earlier, about five minutes ago. We talked about that. Yeah. And this question can be for Dustin, too, and for you, because I'd like to hear both your opinions. But literally everyone we've ever spoke to on this podcast has brought up mindset in some way, shape, or form. But the thing I think that 
gets glazed over the most when people are talking about success and hustle and achievement is gratitude. It's, it's shocking to me that so many people know about this, but it's like the best kept secret. Like, do you, do you feel that? Do you see that too? Uh, Dustin, I'll let you go forward first. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I think it's, it, and you said it, you know, if you get, if you give it for five days to just try it, it's amazing that the impact it has. I mean, I, Chris, I had the exact same experience you did. Um, when I first kind of got exposed to it, I was like, ah, come on, like kind of suck it up. Let's, you know, let's go. And, and, yeah. uh, it's not, and, and, you know, to me, uh, like one of my lenses has been when I first started, it was like, uh, Spencer, you kind of alluded to it. It's, it's like, it's very basic kind of 30,000 foot view stuff, right? Like, okay, I can, I don't have to worry about food today. I don't, you know, and, and, and don't get me wrong that you should be grateful for that. But when I, when I flipped it to just, what was I grateful for yesterday of what happened yesterday? Like that, that took me like a whole different lens because you can always get twisted into a, a bad day, a bad week, bad month. Right. And, when I was really, and what I found at least is when I'm saying that about yesterday, inherently my lens for that day was different too, because I almost was preparing myself. I'm like, what am I going to say to myself tomorrow? Like, I got to, I got to sort through this stuff. Right. And then, you know, after Spencer, to your point, after just a few days, it, it's really not that hard anymore. Um, and, but yes, Chris, I agree. I think it's, I think it's, uh, tremendously underutilized. And I think just like many things, I think it's because people take it out of the ritual. Um, I think people sometimes will do it in spurts, but they don't recognize building it into their ritual every day and the impact that can have. Well, I've always valued it and I've got to value it more after I wrote a book on mindset, but it wasn't until we had Kevin Monroe, who is the gratitude coach on this podcast, I don't know, middle of last year, where my eyes were wide open to it and I, I developed a newfound, profound appreciation. And from that day on, I feel like it's come up in almost every episode. It's, it's just, it's crazy to me. It's amazing how the, the, that alignment happens, random things. They're like, okay, I never thought of this before, but all of a sudden that one thing, your guest queued it up. And now you're like, oh, I see it here, here, here. In different iterations, different ways, different strengths. But now it's everywhere in life. And I, it's always interesting how God, the universe, earth, wind, fire, whatever you choose to call it, will will share those things at the right time for you or just keep reminding you of those uh, little things. And it's, I mean, I would say our job to pay attention, but I'll be the first person I didn't pay attention for years, right? And that's a whole long story into it, but I hit my rock bottom because I wasn't paying attention to those little signs that life was giving me until it decided to knock the pedestal out and slap me across mm -hmm. the face a couple times. But to uh, to your point, it's it's easy. People gloss over, right? They like, okay, gratitude. It's just something that's it's too easy. We need we need more, right? It's something super simple to do. It has a profound effect, but it's way too. It, it, why would I? It's too simple. There has to be more to it. There has to be something. Mm -hmm. I think people generally they don't want to overcomplicate it, but they don't like that the answer is so simple or easy. So. Mm -hmm they don't buy into it or they do it for a short time. Like, okay, I did it for a week. Cool. I'm good now. I'm good. I did it for or a month. Cool. But then, you know, life happens. It gets out of their, their routines. Uh, and I would say, let's build a habit out of it. Let's keep it simple. Let's not overcomplicate. So much in life can be boiled down to just a simple, simple structure, or simple ideas or simple tasks that you need to do that we overcomplicate them, myself included. I, I overcomplicate a lot. I mean, I stress myself out. But when I bring it down to the simple things, okay, what am I grateful for today? Or what is what was I grateful for? Or what am I grateful for from yesterday? Beautiful. And then now I could see it through that lens. And if I'm looking at it through yesterday, well, now that's going to set me up for success for today. And just keeping it simple has made such a big difference in my life where I built it into my routine, into that my habits in the morning. So my morning routine is I wake up, I brush my teeth, uh, I work out six days a week, and I work out at home. I have a little gym. So then, okay, I go downstairs. But before I work out, I journal, 
I write down affirmations and I write down my gratitude every day. So I go on there and I write those things down. Did it start that way? No, it started with working out. Then it started working out with journaling and working out. Then it was gratitudes and then affirmations, right? So I slowly stacked it, right? Habit stacking, uh, mm -hmm. Atomic Habits by James Clear. Great book yep. that breaks it down. Yep. Uh, so feel free to check that out if you haven't yet. But um, so I stacked those habits. So now I'm helping myself and my body loves habits, loves routines. So now it automatically goes, falls into that routine of, oh, okay, I'm writing my gratitude. I'm looking for these three things I'm grateful for and mixing it up because we want to, we want to keep life easy. Okay. So let's get real sciencey real quick. Um, cause it's fun. Uh, your body wants to conserve as much energy as possible. It wants to stay alive for as long as possible to do that. It wants to reduce the amount of energy it's using. It's burning to do that. So hence why we love re uh, taking an elevator or the escalator as opposed to going up the stairs. Well, hmm. Our thoughts and the things that we do are the same way. Your body loves to build habits and routines because then it doesn't have to think and fire as many uh, neurons off and, and go through all the motions, different muscles, so it can conserve energy. Well, if you build up your routines of, okay, I'm putting in and writing down my, my um, gratitudes, great. Now you're building this habit. At first, it's going to be trickier. You're going to be burning more calories. Technically, you are burning more calories as you're thinking and doing that. Okay, so you're starting out, but then your body goes, okay, cool. Let's build this habit. Now we don't have to think about it. But then we, I'm going to challenge you to not think of the same things, right? People's top three, right? Home, like home, food, or shelter, food, and water, right? I get my shelter, food, and water. Those are my gratitudes. Shelter, food, water. I'm grateful for Shelter, food, water. Great. But now it doesn't mean the same thing. It's like when I was growing up, I grew up Catholic. And we had to say a prayer before every meal. I could repeat that prayer at every meal without even thinking about it. You know, when I was a teenager, I could rattle that thing off fast, slow. I didn't have to think about it. I was thinking about digging into that food or what else was happening later that day. It didn't mean anything. Well, if you're just ratting off shelter, food, water as your gratitudes, and you're not allowing it to sink in, then you're not really embracing that, that positive energy. So if you mm -hmm. force yourself to conserve some energy by building into habit, but challenge yourself to burn a little more by thinking, well, what, what's new, what's different? Well, then again, you're gonna start to see more and more you're expanding uh, your horizon of the gratitudes and, and allowing it in. And I'm not saying like, I need to sit here with an open heart and just you know be all Zen and allow it all in. I mean, you can, I do that, but you don't have to, right? That, that's okay. Uh, just by sitting there at the practice, asking yourself that question, Writing is a great way to do it. Uh, the, the process I do and teach, and I love that you said, um, looking to yesterday's in the morning, I write down three gratitudes and I invite everybody to do that for five days. But then at the end of the day, I write down two amazing things that happened that day, right? So I just reflect on that day right before I go to bed. I have a little journal by my bed and I just write down two amazing things that happened. It could have been, hey, I got a promotion or I landed this client or I had, I went skydiving or whatever. But maybe you had an absolute crap day, and the best you could do was this. <laughs> you know what was amazing? That sip of coffee. It was like freaking heaven, right? Oh, great. Write that down, or tea, or whatever it is. Write that down. The gratitudes don't have to be big. They could be small. And sometimes we get stuck on what gratitudes. Well, okay, I'm, I'm grateful for the journal. I'm grateful for the paper. I'm grateful for whoever invented paper and who made this and then who delivered it to my house and who thought of putting ink or lead in a pencil, right? Or graphite into this pencil and construct like, oh my God. And also now I'm thinking I had none or very little gratitude. Now to have like 10 plus just by thinking of who made a journal and pen. So just digging into to that can expand it out. I totally lost what the original question was, but yeah, gratitude, keep it simple into a regular practice. Love it. Something else I, I really stuck to on that, this, this idea that we as humans just make things complex when they don't need to be. And I, I've gone down this path and, and uh, Chris and I actually now just, we created our own uh, planner. And uh, I, the, reason, the reason being is because, so uh, we both use different planners or whatever, and they were 80% of what we wanted, right? But they weren't quite everything that, that we wanted. But if I even go back five, six years ago, 
I was big on everything technology, right? So like the idea of me using a paper planner seemed ridiculous. I was like, I am not going to do that. Like, I don't need to do that. It's right. In, it's in my phone. It's good. I'm fine. And to your point, and so I wanted to create all this technology and workflow and all this other crap that, you know, was going to make me more efficient. And as it turns out, actually doing, doing the paper, doing the handheld, you know, planner and, and it, you know, it, it's not just planning your day, right? It's, it's, what are your priorities? What are you, you know, what are you grateful for? Right. You know, making right. sure that you're being very intentional with the day. And, uh, you know, so just, just hearing you talk about that complexity that triggered me of, of the times that for myself, I just made things so complex versus in reality. And you don't need to use a, a plan. I mean, to your point, it could be a notebook <laughs> and right. just, but that, that, simple task of just writing it down, it is different than typing it in, than using an app, than, you know, just even just saying it out loud, right? Like, uh, and, and not that those other things are bad, by the way, but just, I think a lot of times people in this technological world really underestimate the power of just writing something down. Do you know why that is more, or was more powerful for you? No. So there's nothing wrong with using an app, writing it down uh, on your computer phone, whatever works best for you. And that makes it sustainable for you. And this goes out to everybody listening. Do that, right? Start there. But writing things down physically, uh, it builds a stronger connection. They've, they've researched it uh, to the nth degree. But what's really interesting for me and with the research of writing down gratitude specifically is now, okay, I can write it on a screen, but you don't feel it the same because it takes you a little bit longer to write it out by hand. And so you have to be more thoughtful as you're looking. So what, what are you doing if you're being more thoughtful about that word or thing that you're grateful for? You're thinking about it more. You're living in that moment, feeling that gratitude, that joy, that love in your heart longer than when you just type it on a screen. Plus, you physically feel it as opposed to just being on a touch, quick tap on the screen. You physically feel that pen or pencil in your hand press against it. And then you're also reading it as you're writing it. So now you get the confirmation from your sight seeing it, reading it in your mind as you're thinking about it again. And all you're doing is reinforcing it over and over and over again. Uh, same thing with like affirmations or different things is you, if you say it out loud, well, now you're, you're feeling your body say it, that vibration through your, your larynx as you say it, but then you're hearing it and hearing that, uh, creating that vibration in your mind and it's just reconfirming it all over again in different ways. So, you know, saying your gratitude that can amplify uh, the, the benefits of it as well. And, you know, I'm, before we started this podcast, you explained, oh, yeah, hustle, it's an acronym, right? And the last one really stuck out to me, enjoyment, right? if I remember correctly, yep. enjoy. Yep. We blow off gratitudes because we, as a, we love to hustle, right? We, we, we do it, we enjoy it, we, that's how we build impact. So we hustle, we bring it, bring it, bring it. And I was the worst at celebrating my successes, celebrating the wins, the big ones, you know, I landed this big client, or we have our big summit, or whatever, or the little ones like, hey, I got this one thing checked off my list today. That was a, a struggle for me or I did this thing, whatever. I sucked at celebrating those wins. But as soon as I started to take the time to celebrate it and have people help me with that, like Michael Faber and others to check me. Hey, did you celebrate that today? Did you celebrate that win? <laughs> well, now I get to enjoy it. I get to enjoy that hustle by pausing instead of just grind, 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 grind. Take that step back to pause, to breathe. And to savor the wins I've had of, of the wins that were brought on by that hustle. And so gratitudes mm -hmm. allow us to do that. Let's, you know, I'm all about the hustle. Let's go for it. But also make sure you pause in that to enjoy mm -hmm. it and to keep your cup filled. Because if you keep hustling without that enjoyment, your cup's going to run dry. You're going to reach burnout. And then you're not going to be good for anyone. Not you, your family, the people you want to impact. So make sure you have that enjoyment factor in there as well. Fantastic. That's good. So, uh, Spencer, we talked about culture, we talked about gratitude, we talked about mindset, right? What do you see? What do you see as the number one challenge of people buying into this? Right. So, is it just trying it? Is it is it uh, acknowledging that they need to make a change? Like what what gets you know, and I talk to a lot of different people on, on different things. You know, some might 
call these things hokey. Some, some might never buy into it. Some might try your things for a few times, but not really buy in. But I, I feel like so many times people just don't even realize that they're at a point where this could be really, really helpful for them. And, you know, to me, I feel like whether you're uber successful or you're in that pit, I feel like this can help you anywhere in that, in that process, but only if you, only if you accept it. Right. right. And how have you seen to get people just over that, that hump? It's a fabulous question. And yes, you need to commit, you need to commit to it, uh, to really see those results, right. Uh, thinking of the businesses I've built, um, and as you're explaining, hustlers came to my mind too, that sometimes we build a plane as we're flying it, right. We're like, okay, let's all, let's go yeah. all in and let's figure it out as we're going like, Oh crap. I'm, I'm planning on selling this next week, but I don't have it built yet. Oh, right. And you build it out and figure it out and, and build it as you go. Well, you went all in. And so with things like this, woo woo, crazy, you're like, okay, well, if you're only going to put 10% in, you're only going to get 10% of that result. Or if you say, hey, let me go all in. But you give yourself uh, an out. Let's say, hey, I'm going to go all in for two weeks or a month. And then I'm going to pull out and just assess. What did I notice? Was it beneficial? Was it not? Well, then now you have an out. You're good, right? You could be like, okay, I'm only going to do it for one month. And then, all right, let's see. Or you go to an event for a weekend, right? Like, all right, let me invest in this for, in myself for this weekend. And I, but I'm going to go all in. I'm just going to trust it and, and dig in. And then afterwards on the flight home or drive home, I'm going to stop and reassess and go like, okay, was it worth it? Did I learn? Did I grow? Did I do something like that? Uh, but you have to be willing to go all in. And so to answer your question of how to, to get people to, hey, let's, let's jump in and do this. I would say as well, what is it costing you not to? What is it costing you if you do, right? Look at all the cost factors of it. For, and it might be monetary to a degree, but it's also your emotions, your time with your family, the enjoyment around your family. Like, are you savoring the time as you're there hanging out with your kids, playing ball or, you know, going to the golf simulator? Or are you distracted by work all the time? Uh, are you all over the place? Well, what are those costs, right? And the, yeah. and you get to determine that. I could share my thoughts and opinions, but that's on you. So you guys determine and, and gals determine that cost for you. And then why? Why do you want to do it? Does it really matter to you? You know, like for, for working out, I did that yo-yo diet thing for years and gained weight, <laughs> lost weight, gained weight, lost weight, because I didn't have a solid why. I just did it because oh, I want to feel good. Okay, good. I did it three, four times and I, I felt good. So I stopped working out, right? And uh, oh, shocker, I gained the weight back or yeah, I lost the strength, whatever. Yeah. So for me, it's look at the cost, just go all in. But if you really want to try it out and just see, my thought is do one thing that can, that's short term, that can get you some results. So the gratitude challenge, do it for five days. Mm -hmm. If you try it and you, and you commit, you go all in on doing these gratitudes for five days. And then you reassess, say, hey, okay, did I see results? Did I not? If you did, cool. Do you want more of that? Do you want to really implement that into more of your life? Not just gratitude, but really build it up and become that master of your energy sovereignty or whatever that thing is you're looking at. Great. Awesome. Do it. But if not, then don't. Then what are you out? Five days or two, two and a half minutes of your life to try something that might have helped you and you realize, and it, all it is is a lesson. You, all, you just learned that, hey, that wasn't for me. I've done things, I've done things with people and I go, oh, cool. And I didn't learn as much as I wanted to learn or it just didn't click with me. Was that a total waste of my time and money? No, because I still learned. I just realized that that was not an alignment. And okay, so let's look out and find something else that is. You know, you, what I think is great about what you hit on is level of commitment. I know Chris and I have talked about this a lot and, and I was actually just talking to a, a coach this this weekend as well. And I really, you, you want to work and you want to coach and help people that want, that are committed themselves, right? Like right. at some point you just have to decide, like, are you, are you going to try this or are you not right? And to your point, you can adjust, but you just got to, you got to make that decision. And, and I think the other point that was really critical, I think it's far too often when people think of investing in coaches or personal development or anything like that, they always think about, well, what is this going to cost? But they ignore what it's going to cost to not do it. Yes. And 
I think that's such a such a critical point because people can just continue to be in this rat race and this cycle and 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 can't get out of it. And they think, oh man, but that's that's a lot of money or that's you know whatever. It's like you know what, if you want it bad enough, you'll find a way to get it done. And if you know, again, it doesn't need to be you need to invest in it for twenty years, right? Just invest. Right. Go to that event. Know. Go get, hire yeah. that coach for the three months or whatever it is, attend that, that program, that virtual event, whatever, but do a five day challenge that takes two and a half minutes or whatever, yeah. but go yeah. all in and, and go for it and see, because then, then you'll know. And what's the upside? What if I used to hate what if questions when I was a teacher, cause it'd be like, what if aliens attacked us? I'm like, okay, let's, let's get real. But what <laughs> if it worked? What if it helped? Yes. There's yeah. a financial commitment. Yes. There's a time commitment. Does it align with you? Does it work for you? Can you make it happen? If you can, yeah. great, then go all in. Because then if you if you half-ass it, you're doing yourself a disservice. And you're doing a disservice not only for you, but your family, you know, your kids, your spouse, your team members, everybody. If you don't go all in on you and your growth, you're doing everybody a disservice, including yourself. I love that. So Spencer, we're almost up against the top of the hour, but I, I have to squeeze in one more question because uh, Dustin and I come from a deep background of coaching youth sports. And, you know, I know you have a sports background as well. So often when we're coaching and I'm in the midst of coaching third grade girls basketball, which is absolutely exhilarating. And you could be in a game where maybe your team's down by 10 points. And, and maybe it's, it's even probable that it's not likely your team can win. But so often, my message is, let's just finish strong. Because I know if you finish strong and you end the game only down two, right? If you make a strong comeback, it feels like you had a chance, right? And you look back a couple of days later, and you're like, you know what? We actually played pretty well over the weekend. Even if that may not be the picture you painted. But you don't paint that picture if you give up. You're like, oh, you know, that team was so much better. And people make excuses. So how do you implement this stuff in youth sports so that there aren't the excuses? There isn't the bad body language. People buy in. And even even when you do lose, and maybe by a lot, people say, hey, you know what? Like, we gave it. We gave it our all today. Uh, it's It can be tricky, especially in competitive sports, right? Where you we're so taught by society, quote unquote society, like we need to win. We need to be that first place that what if we created a culture, right? Going back to the culture component, but even in sports, your team that, hey, they did their best. They pushed hard. You saw that team member who didn't dive for the ball, dive for it that time, right? Or they they pushed themselves. They had a strong comeback. And you focus on celebrating the good, the positives in there. Uh, and you as a coach or the parent or team member in that group said, hey, let's focus on the positives. Let's celebrate those wins, the good things, the big ones, the small ones that the team did really well. Let's celebrate those and and acknowledge the fact, hey, okay, maybe, yeah, we didn't win. We didn't get there. But you know what? We came a heck of a long way from halftime or from whatever. You look at the growth, right? I think of the book Gap and Gap and the Gain from Dan Sullivan, right? You could look at the gap. Ah, oh, we didn't win. We were so close or whatever. We didn't win. Look at the big gap. Or Look how much, how far we came and you celebrate those. And then when it comes and you celebrate them that night, that day, you celebrate them. You don't focus on the negatives. You remember the things that could have gone better, the things that you can improve. You have a list, uh, great. But then you celebrate those wins, especially in that moment. Then as uh, when it's time for practice again, then you can address those things. Hey, you can still celebrate those wins, celebrate and savor them. But all right, let's work on these things. So we know, oh, we could improve this because that can help us later on. So you celebrate the wins and then you focus on those quote unquote negatives as opportunities to learn and grow. I feel like we could have a whole episode on coaching sports or, you know, th this positive mindset, positivity, energy, sovereignty in, in, in leadership and business. But um, we'll have to have you come back. I think that's, that, that's what that means. So I thank you for joining us today. But before we let you go, Tell our listeners a little bit more about where they can find you and some of the upcoming events, because I know you're speaking all over the place. You've got a podcast, a newsletter. Tell us more. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, well, you we can find all the good stuff, all the information at our website, wearejonesin4.com. So like we are the Jones and J-O-N-E-S-I-N-F-O-R, like you're Jones in for positivity. 
uh, but we are Jones and four.com. Uh, we have some cool events, different things. We, uh, just before recording this, we got done with our winter yoga retreat. We have a uh, crush and conquer me- and a meditation experience coming up and our big summit in Chicago in September. That would be awesome to have you guys there and uh, some listeners there. We can have a whole hustle mindset area for people to come together and hang out. That would be a blast to have, but yeah, go to yeah. we are com. You can see all that, the, my podcast, the daily energize and all the other good stuff there. Folks, if you need some positive energy in your life, you need more Spencer Jones. At least follow him, subscribe to the podcast, lots of good content. I've talked a lot lately about uh, the people we've had on our show and how just they've had a lot of positivity to my newsfeed. You made a comment earlier that what you look for is what you get more of. And you know, if I zoom back the last couple of years, I don't have a lot of the fake news. I don't have a lot of the politics. I don't get a lot of the comments that maybe some people I'm connected with like normally would go off about certain things. And I don't mean in a good way. Um, I just don't see that stuff. And so what I do see is people who are, you know, lighting up my newsfeed in in a positive way, like small victories, life changing moments, and the other things that they're doing for people in their world, like you and Michael. So follow Spencer Jones. It's amazing what happens when you start curating your feed to people who are pouring positive energy into you instead of that negative energy. So start looking at your feeds on social media, but also in life and start curating that so that you could be at your best and shine your light. And I'll I'll leave with this Um, to you guys and everybody here. Remember, you are amazing. You are worthy. You are enough just the way you are. Thank you so much for having me on, guys. I appreciate you. Boom. What a great way to end this show, Spencer. Thank you. To all the listeners out there, thank you again for tuning in. We appreciate yours. Until next time, peace.